Let's jump to our man Teddy Cakestat, folks. You can reach Teddy every trading day at forex-trading-unlock.com. We talk to Teddy every Wednesday at 40 past the hour. Mark that one on your calendar so you can tune in every week. Teddy Cakestat, what's going on, man? Morning, Tommy. We got a short holiday week this week. I bet you want to talk about the yen, huh? You know what, man? I, I almost I almost just let off with it and I said, ah, we'll just see where we go. But I, I got it up on my chart to begin with, man. You were talking about being a bull teddy, even with uh Japan over there saying, hold on, we're going to put a cap, but let's kick it off, man, because it's been quite a run in the yen. I got it up here on a daily basis trading at 125.68 mm -hmm. right now. Talk to us, man. What's going on? Well, we had a higher move high today. I think the high it was 126.30 something, 31, yeah, 32. Yeah, 126.31, so, sure, yep. Um, now, right now, the, the yen is just getting devalued versus most of the currencies out there, especially all the strong ones, you know? So it's not just the dollar, the pound yen, the Aussie yen, they're all like pushing highs. The U.S. dollar yen, though, is the one that is the strongest one that's impacting the yen. And now we know there's a line in the sand at 130. I think no matter what, you have to be very careful right now um, trying to sell into this move. I think we're going to definitely start to push up to that upper 128, 29 area over the next, well, everything is so accelerated. We blew through my, I mean, I thought we would hit 122 and then 120, you know, a higher target over to not for another couple of weeks yet. So um, right now this is so accelerated with the momentum that I you gotta you gotta ride this, you know, and I think it's gonna continue. So I'd be very cautious. I think you're gonna see a lot of swings. I mean, we had a big sell-off last Monday that really pounded the end for a while, or gave strength yeah. to the end, excuse me. Um, and uh, But it didn't hold up. You know, the news is out there, the market doesn't seem to care. And the reality is if you look at the 10-year and the 30-year notes, I mean, they are coming off new move lows again from this week. You know, so and that that strength in the uh, interest rate factor until the Bank of Japan does pull the trigger is definitely going to be an issue as far as the driving force from momentum to the upside for the U.S. dollar strength and other currencies against the yen. Yeah, it's pretty remarkable that it's just been so strong um, in light of of a cap that that as a trader, you know, you think, mm -hmm. OK, I got a cap, my risk reward potential. Where are we going? Um, but nonetheless, man, you can see that it's just uh, strong, 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 man. I got I mean, going back to the pretty remarkable since March 7th, mm -hmm. outside of those three bars on that initial pullback that it had from March 29th, 30, I only mm -hmm. got one or two other red bars. And you're talking about what? six weeks of action right. um, trading from 115 to 125 um, right. like you say just everything moving so fast in this and we market were sideways right now. for the for four months before that you know we were in a range trade I mean we were inching higher but for the most part it would make new highs and then correct back off of it really quickly sure. we're not seeing that t type of activity right now yeah on a weekly basis man the charts just uh, bonkers in terms of the last mm. six weeks um, sure. just straight up uh, in one way Mm -hmm. Where else do we go, Teddy? What else is on your radar for what's moving this week? Uh, well, I would say use caution. We have Good Friday coming up. So no matter what, you're going to see the market start to close globally going into Thursday into Friday's trade. Um, anything that is open uh, on Friday is going to be very, very illiquid. You know, okay. so it's always a bad. <laughs> you know what? You, you know why the stock market is closed on Good Friday? It has nothing to do with a religious thing. But twice the stock, U.S. stock market was open on Good Friday and both times there was a crash. So the markets don't <laughs> like Good Friday. So I don't know if it's a God thing or not a God thing. <laughs> Whatever it is, it's so they said. Bad, let's just close it. <laughs> yeah, juju. Yeah. So if you're not in a position going into this weekend, wait until Monday. That's my biggest point. You know. So as far as what's as, going uh, on, because you're following forex, and obviously that's a, a world market more so than our mm -hmm. equity markets, even though that's a world market as well. Um, how is you know this holiday, Easter in particular? Um, Friday is uh, across the globe very slow uh, as as it come into um, uh, you know is it, as in world markets basically just dry across the board as well. Yeah, I think so. I think it's going to be so. You're going to see, you know, especially. I mean, we have the uh, obviously the geopolitical tensions are different than most uh, holiday periods, if you will. Sure. You know, so um, but we can't remove that. That factor is there. It's not going away. Yeah. So I think that you will see a little bit more of a disparity as far as the open from the close on uh, Thursday into Friday into Monday's trading or Sunday night's trading, depending on which market you're seeing, um, because of that little extended period. Um, but I don't think it's going to be that significant. The reality is we know inflation is not going away. All these variables are already there. There's not going to be any 
any shock that inflation's higher or if oil is up yeah. a little bit more or whatever. You would need a radical move like for oil to open up like twenty dollars higher or twenty dollars lower. You know, that's not gonna happen. You know. Yeah. So I mean I, I think that you're going to see uh, obviously a lot of like erroneous spikes. That's why I said be cautious of if you're not in the market, wait till Monday, you know, because the think about the algorithms. When you have the markets closed like this for this extended period, once they open, these algos are going to kick around all over the place. So all your weak stops on either side of the market are probably going to get run up a little bit, you know, it's depending on the different markets, sure. you know, so it's just not a good trading environment. You know, it's not yeah. about being indecisive. It's just it's the mechanics of what's going on. And you're not going to find, I think, any real value valid buy or sell signals until after next until after this weekend you know yeah. so you know open that's yourself up to at. a little bit of volatility from a light market mm -hmm. right where it's really tough to Correct. tell it's almost flipping a coin Correct. in terms of where it goes uh mm -hmm. let's talk a little bit about crude if we can man sure. we're back above 100 bucks and in this market every time i mean just since monday i was talking about as i kicked off the program ten dollars to the upside from monday morning of 92.93 mm -hmm. uh we all know gas prices man just uh record prices <laughs> What do you see happening in this crude market, Teddy? I think that we've found a nice little support base. You know, I think that we're going to start to inch higher. I don't think we're going to accelerate at a high rate like we have over the past couple of months. I think we're definitely kind of buffering in the resistance. But I would say that we're going to make higher move highs and higher move lows. I think we're digesting this upper 90 to lower right around $100 as a baseline moving forward because there's nothing that's going to come fundamentally to make us bearish this market. You know, even though the world, you know, we have some of our oil partners, if you will, that are opening up their reserves these numbers are insignificant we're talking about speed bumps you know so yeah and even if they they open up their supply chains it's still a matter of getting it to us you know so that's another issue as well you know and then here's something i think you really have to think about is that you know the port of shanghai went to complete shutdown at the end of march we have a big supply chain issue that's about to hit us again over the next couple of months it's also going to hit shipping and also it's going to hit the energy costs so i would think that it, over the next couple of months that support base alone is going to drive the price of crude probably up to new levels like for us to see 140 150 by july 4th or the end of the summer i think is very very rational without a Oof. doubt you know and to be quite honest with you if we don't see and i think about this if these lockdowns start to build go like they are going in china and continue continue to progress like they did um two years ago or a year ago we're looking at some major, major inflationary things that are, gonna kick up, that are definitely going to influence oil. So then $200 a barrel oil by the end of the year could be very rational. Oof. That's, yeah. that's, that's a good one to end on, man. They'll be coming yeah. back next week to hear the take on <laughs> that sure. one, man. Teddy, we appreciate the conversation as always, man. We look forward to talking to you next week. Have a great long weekend. Have a great Easter, man. Thanks, Tommy. You too. You guys have a good weekend. You too, man. Thanks so much. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back to finish up the show.